creativity. People think it's something that hits you like lightning when a genius idea appears out of thin air. So when inspiration doesn't strike, it can feel frustrating. But is that really how creativity works? Eddie Schleiner, founder of Very Good Copy, says no. And this is what he says. Like a better word for creativity is connectivity because creativity is kind of an empty word. It doesn't tell you anything about the process or how to do it. Connectivity is a, is a much more specific way to think about it because it tells you exactly what you have to do. You have to put things together. What Eddie is saying is that you don't have to be an Einstein, Van Gogh, or Beethoven to be a creative genius. Creativity is a muscle you have to work work out knowledge in this marketing pops episode you learn first how to come up with better ideas on a deadline second why being creative does not mean being original third how to connect the dots to create something new and fourth why it's important to work on multiple projects at once now before we start i created a free power-ups cheat sheet that you can download to fill in and apply eddie's five creativity tips to improve your marketing go to marketingpowerups.com right now to get it or find the link in the description or show notes. Are you ready? Let's go! Marketing Power Ups! Ready? Go! Here's your host, Ramley John! And you mentioned it earlier before we actually started recording. I wish I started recording earlier. How very good copy changed, changed your life. You, you mentioned that you know it has... Change, would you say it changed the trajectory of your career essentially by starting up uh, very good copy? I think so. You know, very good copy is a very strange thing that's happened in my life. You know, I, I started very good copy as a way to teach myself copywriting and to teach myself marketing and creativity concepts. Um, you know, so very good copy started as a long Google Doc with fifty micro articles in it. That it was really just me right. writing for myself and and writing for the pleasure of writing and also writing, you know, to teach myself. Like I said, every time I came into an insight, a technique, a principle from something I read or something I heard, you know, I would try to put that into writing because I thought, hey, if I could put this into a clear and concise article and make it engaging, engaging, you know, then I'm ready to use it in my own promotions. So that's how that's how VGC started, and you know when I put it out there and it and it kind of gained traction organically, that was really surprising to me. And I mean, it's you know it's only been a f about maybe two and a half years or so that I've been promoting it and and keeping up with it in earnest. Um, and since I've done that, it it has certainly changed my career and, and my life just in in the fact that it's it's given me all these opportunities. Um, so yeah, I I recommend starting something on the side because I was I was working on very good copy the whole time that I was at G2 you know but I was very lucky that I worked with great people there and they gave me the opportunity to um to you know to 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 work on this thing and and to spend my energy on it because I think they knew that even though you know it wasn't it wasn't G2 specific it was still adjacent you know I was still working on uh, you know, a skill set that I was going to use at G2. So they were very open to it. Thank God for that because it, it really, it really did. It really did change. It really did change everything about uh, my life and my career. Did, did I hear that right? That very good copy was like your swipe file in the beginning in a Google doc format. Like you were putting all your information that you were finding that's super cool. And then, and then it just turned into this, like, I don't even know how many subscribers you are. Like multiple hundreds of thousands of subscribers with courses and the book coming out, but like it started off as a Google Doc swipe file, essentially. It started off as a as definitely a Google Doc, and it was a swipe file. But it was like I was turning my learnings and the things that I came into into these little articles, and just like kind of honing this this process of creating these articles. You know, I, I basically every article has like three elements or three pillars, and that's like the narrative or the story, and then the lesson. Uh, you know, the takeaway, whatever technique or principle I'm trying to teach or impart, and then the word count. And if I put those three things together, if I connect the lesson and the story in X amount of words, then one of these articles pops out. And so I was just trying to, I was just trying to do that over and over again, in part because I wanted to learn and teach myself and in part because it was fun. I just enjoyed writing. them. I just liked the, 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 uh, the process of it. So you gave yourself constraints. So like, you know, here's the lesson, here's the topic. 
uh, and then here's the number of words. And then did you just did you just lock yourself? There's this misconception that creative people lock themselves in a room and then lightning strikes. And then that's when the bites ideas come. But you're saying, I just came up with a lesson and that and number of words. And then did it just flow out? Or like, uh, what, what was that experience like for you? Yeah, I mean, I think, yes, creativity is born out of constraint. You know, if you put if you put borders around yourself, if you put a fence around yourself and you say, hey, I can only work in this realm. I can only work in this space. I can't step out of it. Doing something creative becomes much easier uh, because there's nothing scarier than a blank page and like, in effect, like a world of possibilities. Do anything is a really scary thing for a creative person or a writer or a designer or anything like that because, uh, you know, there's just too many possibilities and then it becomes overwhelming. But if you say, hey, you know, I have a story here an anecdote, a vignette, what have you. And then I have one lesson, one takeaway, and I'm going to find a way to bridge these two things. And I'm going to do it in, say, 300 words. Then you have these very clear parameters. You have these very clear borders and walls right. around you. And so it becomes, it becomes much easier. And, and you, know, I, you know, to your question, did I lock myself in a room? <laughs> Maybe at first, you know, I would lock myself in there and just kind of get right. it out. Yeah, But then I would leave. I would leave the room mm -hmm. after I got the first version right. done. That first draft, you know, I, 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 I let it sit. I went outside. I did something with my friends. You know, I did something to take my mind off the work, whatever it was. Uh, and then I came back and I looked at it with fresh eyes and I had new ideas because while I was away, my brain was still incubating. I was still thinking and, and processing and solving the problem in the background. I love that. It's like marinating chicken, you know, like you, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you want to cook the chicken right away because like it's not going to be as good as if you let it with the lemon juice. Maybe I haven't eaten lunch yet, <laughs> but yeah. you know, you marinate the chicken <laughs> and then it'll, it'll come out better if you wait the 24 hours. And the same thing, That's right. what I'm hearing is the same thing and let the incubate ideas because sometimes the best ideas come from thinking, letting it go, like you said, and then just taking a shower or going for a walk with a dog or uh, sitting with your family or watching like Netflix. Uh, and then, oh, it's like, oh, what if you connect those two dots then? comes up with an even better idea from from that, essentially. Creativity is connectivity. Like a better word for creativity is connectivity because creativity is kind of an empty word. You know, it's it's it doesn't tell you anything about the process or how to do it. You know, connectivity is a is a much more specific way to think about it because it tells you exactly what you have to do. You have to you have to put things together, you know, and creativity is really just putting disparate things together in a flush way. And the beauty of incubation and the beauty of, of our brains is that uh, it, they do it for us, you know, if we let them, if we, if we walk away from the problem and take our mind off of it, spend time with uh, our people, with the things that we want to do, with the people that we want to be around, um, and just be in a relaxed kind of uh, calm uh, state, you know, your brain uh, will take that opportunity to think for you and to process things. And then when you have an epiphany or when you have like a light bulb moment, that's really your brain just kind of incubating and sending things up, uh, sending things up to your conscious mind and, and saying, hey, here's a connection for you. What are you going to do with it? That's so good. Let, you, you said let your brain think for you. I think it's, it's uh, often, uh, you know, something that we underestimate how, how much like we do need that rest. That rest creates creativity and connectivity that you mentioned. And when we don't allow that to happen, like sometimes we don't put out our best work. It's just like hopefully what we're all trying to do is put out our best work out there into the world, essentially. That's another thing. I mean, you know, some people some people create to build an audience only, and some people create to build and create things that they love and want to see in the world, I guess. And um, there's got to be some kind of middle ground, I guess. You know, if you want to make a living at it, you have to build an audience and you have to get your work out there. Um, so there's really no working around that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's always kind of walking this line between creating the things that move you as a person and 
the things that move you know others. your audience right uh others. and then yeah, creating things right. that move like the algorithm you know and, <laughs> and uh you know get get posts to perform you get know the the, there has there has to be a fine line that's that's funny how, how you said that there's also that balance between like sp- sending spending some time to marinate or incubate an idea to I watch one of your workshop. You talk about this Parkinson's law, where you know cutting down your your time frame. Uh, if you give yourself a year to write a book, uh, it will take two years. <laughs> it's like yep. you give yourself three weeks. Yeah. How do you? How are you finding that balance? Where do you? Maybe you write way in advance before the deadline, so that you give yourself enough time to incubate. But also at the same time, you don't want to give it too much time because because then it would be like this never ending uh, perfection loop that never ends essentially. Well, sometimes you know incubation and Parkinson's law are kind of mutually exclusive. You know, Parkinson's law is really just stating that you know work expands to fill the time that you make available for it. So, like to to what you're saying to your point, if you give yourself a year to write a book. You will take a year to write that book, but if you give yourself uh, three weeks, right, twenty-one days, like Charles Bukowski wrote *Post Office* in, in three weeks, right, um, uh, it, you'll finish it in three weeks. You know, uh, and and the reason for that is because you don't give yourself the opportunity to complicate things. If you give yourself a year to write a book, you have you have all that time to complicate things, to to add variables, to add chapters, to overthink it in a way and, and uh, make the work more complicated, make the process more complicated. Uh, but um, if you give yourself three weeks, then you don't necessarily have time to second guess or overthink. And, um, you know, in some cases, that makes sense. Sometimes you really do need to be thoughtful and think deeply. And you just have to be realistic about like, you know, is this the right time to employ a Parkinson's law. Um, but sometimes, you know, if you're writing an email, for example, it's, I think it's, it's better for with like smaller scale stuff, like an email, if you give yourself two hours to write an email, you'll finish it in two hours. And, um, you know, instead of finishing it in five hours or a day, and then you save all that time. You know? It's about finding the balance is what I'm hearing. You announce to your audience, to your email list, you're writing a book. Will, did you give yourself three weeks to write that book? Or are you giving yourself a year? <laughs> obviously i can't but uh, you know. yeah it, it hasn't been it's not three weeks and it's not a year so it's somewhere somewhere in the somewhere, somewhere in the in middle, the middle. Right? i'm gonna so leave funny. you in suspense but a lot of it you know a lot of it is already kind of thought out and written it's like you know when i released the course um the landing page course it was so much of it was already done because like the hard part was done i thinking through it thinking through the process, analyzing my own process and, and kind of, you know, breaking it down, making it digestible, organizing the course, like all of that stuff was already done. And I feel like that was the really hard part is like figuring out how am I going to present all of this information and how am I going to do it in a way that's really digestible and, and easy to follow? Um, I think that was the real work of the course. And when I had that done, then that's when I started promoting it in earnest and, and uh, you know, uh, doing the pre-sale and everything, because then I knew it was just a matter of, you know, finishing up the writing and recording it. And that to me was more of a, um, an easy, it was an easier lift than, than the, the real thoughtfulness of, uh, uh, that went into the course. What's your process for, you know, what you're known for as BGC, but a lot of your LinkedIn posts usually go uh, viral and do really well. How much time do you give yourself to write a post? Um, do you have like, do you write like 20 in advance and then let it incubate and then like pick which ones will go just based on your feeling, which I've done myself? Or do you have, do you write it the day before and then no. uh, because of that time crunch? <laughs> but I'm curious what your process is because you've been doing really well there. And I'm sure I'd love to know my, for myself exactly how you do that. So I, I have a, uh, I have, I call it a well to my Google Docs. It's just a long running list of ideas. And, and I think that this is where it all starts, Romley, is just like having um, a repository of ideas. And to, to achieve that, you really need to become draconian about writing them down. So as soon as, as soon as I see a connection 
as soon as a connection comes to me. And again, a connection is really just a story and a lesson. And then, you know, the, the work is putting those together, but the connection piece is, is much easier. It's just kind of seeing, oh, here's an anecdote. Here's a, here's a story. Um, and here's what this story reminds me of in the context of copywriting or uh, creativity, you know? And so when I see that idea uh, or that connection pop up, I write it down just to make sure that I don't lose it. And so I have this long, long running list of connections uh, that I've made in the wild, you know, whether I'm watching a movie or talking to somebody or whatnot. Um, and I've kind of trained myself to just pull out my phone and, and, and write it down. So I think that's the first step is just having this, this, this well of ideas to, to kind of draw from. Um, and then as far as writing goes, you know, I would say maybe every one in 20 or one in 25 of those connections or ideas, I think, Hey, you know, I, you know, I, I can, I can create a compelling article out of this. And so I'll, I'll start writing it and, you know, I'll, I'll finish it relatively quickly, you know, compared to how much I, how, how much I edit it. Yeah. I'll finish it maybe in an hour. You know, it's, they're only 300, 400, 500 words. That's the range. So I, I've done so many of them. It's already kind of in my head put together before I start writing. So sometimes I write it out and as long as it takes me to type it, you know, it just, I just kind of. Uh, I just let it out and um, then I walk away from it and that's where the incubation, you know, starts. That's where that process kind of takes hold is, you know, I, I, I have this sense of relief that it's on, on paper now. And now it's kind of like the fun part is like kind of like molding it and chiseling it and making it exactly what I want it to be. Um, that's the fun part, but it's also the, the time consuming <laughs> part, probably the hard part. Uh, you know, so I, I, it probably takes me, um, a week, maybe an hour or two a day of writing and, and editing uh, after it's after that first draft is done. And then, you know, to your point about, you know, earlier about the book, I don't know if we were recording when, <laughs> when we were talking about it, but you were like, hey, you know, I had this book and it was there was a deadline and that was kind of that was when I needed to push it out. I have a deadline too, a very good copy. It's like every Tuesday I got to send out an article uh, or a newsletter. So it's got to be done by Tuesday. And if it's not if it's not perfect if it's not 100 percent, then that's too bad i probably should have uh <laughs> you know i should, probably should have planned my 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 week out better before we continue i want to thank those who made this video possible 42 agency now when you are in scale up mode and you have kpis to hit the pressure is on to deliver demos and signups and it's a lot to handle demand gen email sequences rev ops and even more that's where 42 Agency, founded by my good friend, Camille Rexton, can help you. They're a strategic partner that's helped B2B SaaS companies like ProfitWell, Teamworks, ProtSocial, and HubDoc build a predictable revenue engine. If you're looking for performance experts and creatives to solve your marketing problems at a fraction of the cost of in-house, look no further. Go to 42agency.com to talk to a strategist to learn how you can build a high efficiency revenue engine now. You can find that link in the description below. Let's jump back in. One of the creativity tips you did in that workshop is that you should like kind of work on two projects at the same time. Are you working mm -hmm. on two posts so that you can like switch context so that you can marinate or incubate in your in the back of your mind while you're actively working on another one? Yes, yes. This is something I did a lot at work when I worked at G2 because I couldn't necessarily like just write an email and then get up and go for a walk around the city, you know, <laughs> while I was at work, like I had to right. be productive and I had to, you know, in earnest, um, do my best. And so, um, the way that I kind of hacked that system, instead of getting up and, you know, playing ping pong every <laughs> half an hour, you know, going yeah, for a walk or whatever, I would, I would write that email and then I would switch over to a completely different email or a completely different landing page. And my attention would be on that problem. And then, you know, while my attention was diverted, my brain would still be incubating and still kind of figuring out uh, this other problem that I was trying to solve in an email or a landing page or what have you. Uh, and then I found that when I bounced back to that to that first project, um, I had the benefit of all that of all that time away and that incubation. Yeah. And that's something you do with your your posts or your the stuff that you write. Like, are you working on two or three at the same time? Um, yep. Is that yep. average or more? Are you doing ten? At the same time, 
so that yeah. it's like <laughs> all in different stages of uh, of completeness. Ten is an aspiration for sure. I, I would love <laughs> to do more. Um, you know, I I still have to kind of figure out. You know, I'm still very much learning how to manage my time and manage um, the things that I that I'm working on. So whether that's you know podcasts like this or or writing that I'm doing or planning that I'm doing for a launch or there's a lot of different facets to the business. And so, um, you know, I, yeah, full transparency. I'm still trying to figure all of that out. That's, that's challenging. That's been a hard. You figure out a lot of stuff that people are still trying to figure out. I think that well idea is such a great um, thing. It's interesting. You have it in Google, in a Google doc. I'm, is it just all over the place or like, do you have some kind of, sh- I, I'm sure people would love to see your Google doc, but it's your personal, like, is it, is there like columns or structure or like, it's more like, here's everything you have and then kind of have to pull it out, um, you know, figure out where places, things are uh, in, mm-hmm. in that doc uh, on its own. No, it's, it's not, yeah, it's not one document. It's, um, it's a folder. And then each idea is in its own document. And usually the way that I structure it is like, I'll pull it out, pull out my phone, and I'll, I'll have this idea, this connection. I'll write a headline. It's totally a working headline, obviously. It changes 100% of the time, but it's just something to kind of keep me you know, grounded so that I know what this article is about or I know what this idea is about. So I'll write a headline, and then I have three bullets. And the first bullet is the story. The second bullet is the lesson. And then the third bullet is, you know, just whatever I I think is necessary or I think is applicable at that point, you know, to to kind of note down just for extra context. And then as soon as I have this this format filled out, this template basically, headline, three bullets, story, um, uh, uh, lesson, and then and then additional context, then I kind of view it as like an actual idea, you know, something that I could, you know. Um, Take seriously, I guess, uh, and then yeah, I just I just kind of browse this this folder that I have. So it's not all in one running doc. Right, that uh, makes sense. It'll be harder to find <laughs> once. Yeah, but but the truth is, you know, you could do it. You know, the process is whatever works. So if if the process out there for somebody is having it all in one Google Doc, more power to you. I mean, that's not how I did it, but it really doesn't matter at the end of the day as long as that core concept of having a well is there. That's I love. Thank you for sharing that. That's um, I might start doing something similar. Um, I'm using Notion right now to like contain like ideas that I found interesting. Where mm-hmm. it's like, oh, that's interesting. I'll put that into a Notion like workflow that I have. Mm-hmm. What I'm curious about for you is like, you have all this stuff in the well. How do you know which ones like ready to to take out from the well <laughs> to move on? Like, do you have like criteria, or is it, it's based on like how you once again. I keep saying feel, but it's sometimes that is like uh, the key to it. It's something that's resonating with you at that moment at that time. Yes, dude, that's exactly right. Um, there was a feeling that that I have. There's a feeling that I have when I write the idea down in the first place. You know what I mean? And um, I think I think the trick is when I'm going back and I'm looking through the well, and I see that headline. Do I still get that same feeling? I I can recognize that feeling very clearly by now. Um, you know, and, and I think that, I think that any writer or designer, anybody that works in a creative capacity, um, has something similar where they just have this kind of intuition, this gut instinct about what's going to work, uh, and what's not, or what, what, what's moving them and what's not. And so I just look for that feeling, you know, I just, I just try to, uh, I try to be really honest with myself and I'm like, Hey, am I as excited about this now as I was when I wrote it? And if I am, that's a pretty good indication that, um, you know, I, I'm, I should write the thing or like, if it's just, if I write it and then I leave it alone and it's still in the back of my head. Like I remember talking to my mom about this once when I was younger, I was probably in high school. I don't know where we were, maybe at the mall somewhere. I was looking at something, um, <clears throat> some article of clothing. I really don't remember what it was, but I remember what she said. She was like, listen, you don't have to get it now, but if you leave, and you keep on thinking about it afterwards, that's a pretty good indication that maybe maybe you should go back and, and, and buy this thing for yourself. And I think that's the same way I think about ideas. It's like, if, if it's in the back of your head, if it's constantly coming back up, if it's like nagging at you, like write me, write it, you know, make it. 
because it's it's telling you something. That's like my rule for like buying expensive stuff, <laughs> like a car or something. <laughs> it's like if if it's, if after twenty four hours, like it's still um, a need or something is pulling you, uh, mm -hmm. then totally pull it out there. So that's super super cool that it's 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 more of an intuition. And I'm guessing you built this intuition over time by you know consuming um, great content and like reviewing and analyzing um, you know copywriting books. Is that how would somebody build that intuition? Obviously, for you now, you're at the stage where it's you've developed it like a muscle. Like, would you say intuition as a muscle? And like, I guess if sure. it is, how do you build? How would somebody work out that intuition? Well, yeah, intuition is, yeah, it it is a muscle. I, I think it's it's about like kind of developing your taste, you know. And um, people say you're you're born with taste. I don't know. I think I think like I think your I think your taste develops um over time as you as you expose yourself to things you know so um you know the more the more let's say you're reading an author over and over again and that author is moving you that author is doing something for you um you're naturally going to gravitate towards that writing style or that narrative style um you know so um i think the same thing goes for blogs or or uh, any kind of content, really. You know, the more the more you consume it, if it's moving you, the more impact and influence it's going to have over you, and then that's going to consciously or otherwise affect the decisions that you make when you're creating something or writing something. So it's really just a matter of exposing yourself to um, to good things, um, and then giving yourself the grace. I think also to you know use that stuff in your work. You know. And not not be kind of like consumed by originality or like romanticizing originality constantly because it's such a it's such a construct, you know. There's originality. I don't know. It's it's kind of a um, it's kind of a farce, you know. There <laughs> there's not there there really aren't original things. There's 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 connections, and so give yourself the grace to. Give yourself the grace to use things that um, that influence you, you know, that you like. Uh, and over time, you'll see you'll you'll start adding your own spin to these things, and they'll turn into something different, and then they'll be yours over time, you know. So I, I don't know. I I feel like I jumbled that a little bit, but th no, the, the point is, be you know, give yourself give yourself grace, give yourself grace to to use the things that um, that you like in your work. That's so true. I think it's it's understanding, you know, what other people are writing and consuming that. Uh, and I really want to hone in and double click on what you said that creativity doesn't mean that you necessarily have to be original. It goes back to what you said about creativity is about connection. I think you when you did that workshop, that's a quote that you attributed to Eugene Swartz. Mm -hmm. That really like it's. You're connecting dots, and you know, like, give yourself that grace to connect the dots, uh, and not necessarily be this Van Gogh or Be Beethoven <laughs> or this amazing, like, uh, you know, be the next Seth Godin, uh, where they've already forged their own path for that specifically for themselves. And look, even those guys started somewhere. You know, even those guys had influences, um, and so yeah, every, like. Creative work, especially in the beginning, is derivative. You know, you you consume what moves you and affects you, and then if you're interested in making it, you know, it's going to bleed into. If you're interested in making something, it's going to bleed into whatever it is you make, and so you have to give yourself the grace to to do that. Is my point? I think you know, there's there's just so much fetishizing originality and being totally totally clean you know, totally void of, of influence, that just doesn't exist. And if you try to force that, um, you know, you're, you're going to become very frustrated, very embittered, <laughs> you know, it's a process you got to, and you got to kind of put in the time and, and trust it. What has inspired you? Um, I know you, you mentioned you just Schwartz are, I know you, you have some books that you, you suggest and it, for people who are, are tuning in, like what it's, what or who inspires Eddie uh, from VGC? Well, look, I you know I was an English major. I, I studied narrative in college. 
Um, I wanted to write books and novels and, and short story anthologies. That's what I wanted to do for a living. Um, so I was reading and, and the authors that really moved me were minimalist authors, you know, so Raymond Carver, uh, Charles Bukowski, Hemingway. Um, I read these folks and, and I really enjoyed the imagery that they put into my mind. Um, as I was reading, I thought that that was special. And so, um, those guys inspired my writing, um, my style, I guess. And then, you know, when I found copywriting, um, you know, Gary Halbert and Gary Bensavenga and John Carlton and, you know, Claude Hopkins and Kim Cross Schwamm and all these direct response greats, um, you know, they inspired me in another way. And I think that that's kind of where very good copy, um, where that voice and tone comes from. It's just this kind of, it's this, this merging of, of, uh, literature and, and classic direct response. And so, those were those were my inspirations and and absolutely I used stuff from Carver and I used stuff from Schwartz and you know over time um, I kind of made it I kind of made it my own and uh, that's what I'd like to impart to all creative people all all uh, all you know at whatever point you are in your career but especially if you're just getting started as a junior you know use uh use your influences um to make things and then over time those things will become your own you know um as long as you keep at it and you're consistent i think it's super important what you said there that often as marketers we follow other marketers and then we're inspired by marketers <laughs> so it's this cycle of marketers marketing to marketers but often the best inspiration is outside of marketing where it's in classic minimalist literature or hip hop or video games or something else. And that is how you find your style is when, you know, when we consume stuff that is not necessarily within our field of expertise. Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it gets pretty insensuous if you like you're constantly, if you're const if you're just, if you're regurgitating um, the same thing over and over again, you know, from the same industry. I mean, yeah, it, it becomes it becomes hard to um, set yourself apart and like, you know, create something create something interesting. Um, but yeah, to your point, that that comes from stepping outside of your discipline and getting, uh, yeah, I guess getting inspired by uh, uh, something totally totally random you know something something totally separate from what you do every day and finding a way to inject that into into your work um that's that whole you know one plus one equals three thing that's that's creativity that's connection taking two disparate things putting them together in a flush way i love that i'm gonna start uh wrapping up and i want to talk before i do wrap up around career power-ups um mm -hmm. you've been in in copywriting for for several years now i'm curious what's the power-up that's helped you with your career, something that's helped you accelerate your career, whether that's a tip uh, or um, something that you've done, uh, it could even be big GC itself. But what's a career power for you? Other people, other people that I've worked with, man. I mean, when I was a G two, I worked with some of the most talented and uh, generous people, um, namely uh, Adam Goyette, who was the VP of marketing there, who's just an excellent growth mind. Um, Jesse Rowe, you know, uh, who was, uh, also a growth marketer there, uh, Jorge Silva, you know, th these guys, um, you know, Yoni Solomon, who was just a, a incredibly uh, talented product marketer. I mean, these guys, um, taught me, uh, how to think outside of the copywriting realm, you know, and taught me how to spread my work around the internet in an efficient way and, and, and taught me how to distribute and, you know, that's half of all this, you know, writing the stuff and, and making it great, you know, that's 50%, but then, you know, promoting it, getting it out there and um, using it to build a business, that's a whole nother skill set. And so I was very lucky to work with uh, great people who um, were kind to me and generous to me and and uh, uh, just having the humility to, to listen to them and, you know, take their advice and, and uh, um, you know, that, that worked to my advantage. So 
that's the power up there is, is uh, make great connections and, and uh, make friends with people and help them when you can and, and take their advice when, when, when they give it to you. And, and uh, yeah, I can't, I don't know where I'd really be without a lot of that direction. One final question. If you can give yourself uh, an advice, your younger self an advice, you can travel back in time, whether that's like sending a message to your younger Eddie, <laughs> somebody who might be starting out in copywriting or st still studying English liter literature, what advice would you give your younger self? Yeah, my, my mind just goes to creating things that move you, you know, that that's been... You know, if there's another power, power up that I can that I can cite, <laughs> that that's one of them. I mean, it it's really it, something great happens when you focus on creating things that move you, that make you happy, that you're proud to share with your people and your family. You know, something really cool happens there. Um, and uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to think that way because. You know, it's hard to break out of this like kind of comparison cycle and this kind of like uh, this this vanity stats cycle. And, um, you know, you feel like you have to kind of keep up with the Joneses, but really all of that will come, you know, uh, the engagement, um, the fanfare, the, um, you know, all, all of that, all of that will come eventually as long as you commit yourself to making things that, um uh, move you as a person, move you as, as, a, as a professional, I guess, in your, in your discipline, in your space, um, because your people will find you eventually, you know, um, especially if you're taking all the steps to make sure that you're putting that, that stuff that you love in front of other people that, that might love it. Um, but I think that's a power up in and of itself is, is doing the things that, uh, and making the things that you want, um, you know, your kids to see 10 years from now or 20 years from now, the things that you're proud of, um, that's the stuff that's going to give you energy and give you passion. Um, and people are going to be able to feel it. You know, they say like, Hey, when you eat good food, homemade food, you could, you can feel the love in there. You can taste it. I, th I think this, I think the same thing applies to writing, to content, to, to, to making art. Yeah. So that's, that's what I'll tell young Eddie. I love this chat with Eddie. I used to think that I'm not a creative person, but I'm glad Eddie debunked that it takes a genius to be creative. Now you can subscribe to Eddie's newsletter that I, I love, verygoodcopy.com and follow Eddie on LinkedIn and Twitter. You can also find those links in the show notes and description. Thank you to Eddie for being on the show. If you enjoyed this episode, you'd love the Marketing Power-Ups newsletter. I share the actionable takeaways and break down the frameworks of world-class marketers. You can go to marketingpowerups.com to subscribe and you'll instantly unlock the three best frameworks that top marketers use to hit their KPIs consistently and wow their colleagues. I want to say thank you to you for listening and please like and follow Marketing Power-Ups on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. If you're feeling extra generous, kind of leave a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and leave a comment on YouTube. Goes a long way in others finding out about marketing pops. Thanks to Mary Sullivan for creating the artwork and design. And thank you to Faisal Kaigo for editing the intro video. And of course, thank you for listening. That's all for now. Have a powered up day. Marketing Power Ups. Until the next episode.